Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. I hope that you are all well. Today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite plants in my collection and that is my beautiful philodendron silver sword or philodendron hastatum. If you have been following my channel for a little while, then you would know that I am very much in love with this plant. So we're just gonna spend a few minutes and talk all about it. Okay, I'm just gonna set it down on the couch beside me while I chat here. So I hope that's okay. You can still see some of it in the frame. So I received my first philodendron silver sword as a cutting that my friend Courtney sent to me in the mail in the fall, last September of 2020. And this was a plant that I had never really desired. I had never really sought it out or wanted it in my collection. Um, however, she kindly sent me a cutting and as soon as I opened that package, you guys, I immediately fell in love with this plant. I feel like they're truly a specimen that photos don't entirely do justice. I mean, in some cases they do, but just seeing it in person is just so beautiful. I love the bluey silvery leaves and the leaf shape and everything about it is just so stunning. Um, so I was very taken aback and surprised by how much I liked it. So I quickly began rooting those cuttings in water and dreaming of the day that it would become a large plant. Fast forward a couple of months, um, I guess in November is when I came across this plant in one of my local plant shops. They had um, some quite large philodendron silver sword in and they were really reasonably priced. I actually got this plant for $25 and I could not believe my luck. I just, it's honestly been like one of my best plant purchases. So that is this guy. I've had him since November. So how many months is that now? So I've only had him for about four to five months. He has put out two new leaves in my care or possibly three actually. He's definitely put out this one and this is his most recent one right here. It's actually not as big as the last one he put out, but I'd moved him around and stuff. So who knows, who knows why that is. Um, but yes, oh my goodness, he's just, he's just so, so beautiful. I can't believe this plant, like these leaves are incredible. So I was obviously so over the moon to find this plant. And meanwhile, my other small cutting that I had received in the mail was rooting and it was rooting really well in water. So I was really happy about that. And I was like, perfect, now I'm gonna have multiple of them. So I quickly found out just how easy these plants are to care for. I have honestly, you guys, honestly, I have not had any troubles at all with this plant. I feel like I have ignored it for far longer. Whoops. For far longer than one should ignore a philodendron and it's been completely fine so let's talk about the type of conditions that i grow this plant in um like many of my plants i grow this in basically a controlled environment so it gets lighting from my mars hydro grow lights and those are on a timer, so it's very consistent. I run them for about 10 hours a day. It's on the floor, um, so it doesn't get like super like harsh lighting from those grow lights, but it does get, you know, like moderate consistent lights. And it is also next to my humidifier, so it does get some extra humidity. However, I will say that I don't think that this is a philodendron that is super dependent on humidity. Um, I haven't had any issues having it in lower humidity, which it was not near a humidifier previously. So I've kind of had it in both in both types of conditions and um in its previous spot it was actually quite close to one of my baseboard heating vents um so it was even getting maybe a little bit of dry air from that and it did not complain at all i honestly like i don't think i've even lost a leaf on this thing and look at how full it is like there is basically a whole other plant on this side it's a bit of a smaller one but it's literally like two plants in here a couple of months ago i did pot it into this terracotta pot this is probably like an eight inch pot and i also made it this moss pole and i actually did film that so i'll link the video if you're interested um but since i did that it has actually latched onto and grown onto this moss pole so i'm just so excited about that i can't wait to see this thing 
climb and really push out large, large leaves. So you can see um, on the back here, it is going to eventually give me a new leaf from here. So I'm just like watching and waiting for that. And I will insert some close up footage of the aerial roots, but it's aerial roots are just like wild behind here. And multiple of them have wrapped onto the moss pole. So that's exactly what I want. I'm just so happy about that. Now I get a lot of questions about my plants on moss poles and how I maintain the poles. Um, so I used to be very, very bad <laughs> with moss poles. I would hardly ever miss them or wet them or anything like that. Um, and I found that my plants would still latch onto them. Um, however, I'm feeling really invested in my plants on moss poles right now So I'm really going out of my way to mist them at least every couple of days. I try to do it every day I recently invested in an electric mister. I'll link it down below But it's basically the coolest thing ever and my new favorite like plant tool And it just makes it so much easier and so much more efficient to be misting my moss poles And I have found that since I've been on top of keeping the moss damp um, The aerial root growth has just really taken off so I think that that really does make a big difference. So I try to mist it and when I water this plant I completely drench the moss pole and I've even been experimenting a little bit with um, putting a little bit of like Super Thrive or fertilizer um, into the moss pole as well. So the watering needs are similar to a lot of other philodendron. Um, if it gets really thirsty it will kind of, let me show you, it will kind of curl its leaves under like this. Um, However, I usually try to get to it before it gets to that point. Um, it can go quite a while without a drink. And then as soon as I see any signs of it being thirsty or as soon as I know it's been a while and I've noticed the soil has dried out, then I give it a good drink. I do wait until the soil is almost completely dry and it seems to do really well with that. So very, very basic kind of um care like i don't do anything special regarding the watering i do fertilize the same as most of my other plants i just lightly fertilize with every watering i'm not going to talk about that a whole lot because i did just make a whole video about how i fertilize and what products i use so go check that out if you're interested but yeah this has truly just been such an easy plant for me um, as for propagation i have not taken any cuttings from mine but from my experience of rooting the cuttings that Courtney sent me, the propagation is very easy. I did root them in water just because I wanted to be able to watch the roots and it worked perfectly, absolutely no problems. You could do sphagnum or perlite as well. I have yet to have any pest problems with this plant, knock on wood. Um, I would imagine, you know, it'd be prone to the same things that any philodendron can get spider mites thrip that type of thing yeah i honestly don't have that much to say about the care i would totally recommend this plant for beginners like it's been just very straightforward for me but also very beautiful this is a good plant for people who like want to try out more uncommon plants or more uncommon philodendron for them to start with this one because it's just so forgiving i would say it's not the fastest growing plant that i have like it's really only put out a few of these leaves since i've got it maybe two or three but I don't even mind it just makes it even more exciting when it does push out new growth so yeah it's all good I know that here in Canada these are popping up at a lot of big box stores almost every time I go to Canadian Tire um, I see these and they're at a lot of our plant shops now um, even at like Home Depot and places like that so definitely keep your eye out if you're looking for one you can probably find one for an affordable price so that is pretty much it you guys let me know if you have a philodendron silver sword and leave any comments you have down below i would love to chat with you thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one bye